All right, guys. I think we uh, should probably talk about this. Uh, and the topic for today is... All right, so I'm watching this guy on YouTube building one of these homemade paramotor engines, and he started with a, you know, $100 engine from Harbor Freight from China. <laughs> and now he flies. And the question is, should you do it? Should you do it? Um, and I want to I wanna talk about that because there's a lot of people currently in the paramotor homemade group and other places that are starting to build these things, and there's a lot of them actually. And I'm always seeing very common questions uh, that I'd like to try to answer all in one go, kind of, uh, to clear some of those things up. And I think first and foremost, and the most important, is uh, if your number one priority and number one question is a paramotor engine costs $3,000 or whatever, $2,700. Um, and I want to use this hundred dollar, <laughs> hundred dollar engine and build one myself uh, for cheaper. And um, to be honest, that's not going to happen, in my opinion. Um, at least uh, not in any comparable way. Um, you have to realize that, you know, you see me flying with this thing. You see me, you know, making modifications. But um, all in all, I'm taking this thing apart and rebuilding it, putting new parts on a regular basis, trying to dial it in. And so, in the long-term scope of the project, uh, it, it was not cheaper than just buying a motor. Um, anyway, so that's probably the most important point is uh, this is not a replacement for buying a paramotor engine. This is a do-it-yourself, um, put a lot of time into it, put a lot of money into it, learn how to do it, uh, try something and then keep trying again until it works, uh, until it makes enough power that you like it. and. Uh, so on and so forth, rinse and repeat until you make something nice. Um, so this is a do-it-yourself project that is an ongoing project. This is not uh, a shortcut to making a, to getting a paramotor engine for cheaper or, um, you know, whatever. Yes, you do get a four-stroke out of it, which in theory um, will be more reliable once it's dialed in. Um, but this is not any way, in any way a shortcut. All right, the next thing I see a lot, uh, and I want to hopefully help clarify a little bit, is the level of modification that it actually takes, in my opinion, to make this flight worthy. Because uh, a few of my first S flights, sure, I flew. You know, uh, I flew on a stock head. I flew on, um, you know, just minor valve train upgrades and billet internals and stuff like that, uh, with my stuff flapping around and push rods popping out. Uh, but the point is, uh, I could barely reach 5,000 RPM, and I uh, could barely, you know, I had enough thrust to fly if I was in a perfect environment. Um, but flying safely and having the ability to climb out if I need to, um, being able to actually get lift so I can take off in no wind conditions, um, the level of modification of achieving that is incredibly high, and I, I only weigh about 175 pounds, and so the more you weigh, in excess of that, uh, the more thrust you need to actually be able to get off the ground um, safely. And you know, it's 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 okay to fly with an underpowered engine, but uh, it's much more fun a safe b and just rewarding being able to get off the ground and hit throttle and actually like lift within a few steps of running instead of having to run, 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 pull a lot of brake, almost stalling the wing just so you get enough lift to get off the ground. Um, which brings me to another point. Uh, recently, a couple of people joined in. And they're talking about building trikes um, using the Predator 212. Um, uh, and, you know, they want to use a trike because they weigh a little bit more than I do. Um, and uh, the trike frame will weigh a lot more. And so, I mean, sure, you can build a Predator 212 to have enough power to get a person like that off the ground and a machine like that off the ground. Um, but it's much easier to just grab something like a Predator 420, which is much bigger. It weighs twice as much, but you have a trike, so you're on wheels. Um, and if you're going to mount the engine to the frame anyway, so it doesn't really matter how heavy it is because you're on wheels. Um, and with much less modifications, you get a more reliable engine that makes more power. So once again, build it internals uh, so it doesn't blow up. And that will open up you know, the higher RPM range um, to be able to drive a prop. You know, you put in a 
bigger cam and some stiff springs in the valve train and you know maybe upgrade the head hopefully um, and uh, you're good to go and it will be much more reliable than this because you can push this to you know above 26 horsepower with crazy compression and methanol fuel <laughs> which a lot of go-kart people do but then you know every drag race you rebuild the engine so um, not my thing um, so yeah just why not just grab a engine that's more powerful um, but you know what once again it goes down to cost you know Predator 420 is like uh, 400 bucks and I'm gonna assume the GX 390 which is the Honda equivalent is a uh, even more expensive than that and then you put in you know billet components and a couple of valve grade update uh, or valve valve train upgrades and then you're you know up six seven hundred eight hundred bucks but in another hand you're thirteen hundred in before you even think about the reduction um, so that's another thing actually Here, here's another question the reduction how do you make a reduction well uh, a company called Ace Aviation already makes them for these engines. Um, their reduction ratio is 2 to 1, uh, which I'm not sure is the best one unless you're making A, a lot of power, or B, you have one of the bigger engines. Um, so 2 to 1, it's available, it's like almost 600 bucks to get it shipped to you. So that's a quick shortcut, it just bolts onto the stock Predator. Uh, you know, I've also shared on the Paramotor Homemade group, if you search for my name, Dimitri, Dimitri Chain Reduction, uh, you will find that this particular reduction I've been working on um, is solely for the purpose of discovering a way for other people to do this more readily and easier. And uh, so it's a chain drive, which a lot of people frown upon, but it's been working for many hours now, um, using cheap parts. So there's a clutch. You have to have a clutch with a four stroke like this. Uh, uh, you cannot do direct drive because there's resonance issues between the motor and the prop. Um, because there's such a big distance of time at low RPM between the pulses, uh, the, there's like a almost a kickback from the prop, so it starts to vibrate and break chains, break uh, like if you have a timing belt that breaks. So once again, this is all off the shelf, off the shelf cheap parts. Chains like 22 bucks, clutch was like 70 bucks, and this sprocket is 25 bucks, um, and they come in any number of teeth. So if you're building this, you don't know what power you're getting out of your engine and you need to adjust the reduction ratio, pop off the sprocket, put in a new sprocket, you know. And as you change the engine, you can put the other sprocket back on. Um, so that leaves, you know, you would have to come up with some sort of a back plate, a pillow block, or a, bulb, a bearing bearing block, sorry, um, that is adjustable for tension, and shaft on the hub. And there's hubs that are designed for paramotors that you can, you can actually buy that are ready to go. So, um, it's doable, um, and it's actually doable with hand tools. Uh, if you can draw something up in CAD and use a bandsaw or even a freaking hand uh, scroll saw um, and, a, and a hand drill, uh, I think it's possible to do it that way. Um, am I willing to do that just to show that it works? Mm, no, have fun with that. <laughs> um, it'd be really easy to do it with a bandsaw and a drill press just to make the back plate. But if you have somebody that you know with machine tools or you're willing to pay somebody to do it, then it's much easier. Um, I went a step further and I made the front plate, uh, which makes it, the whole system stronger and a little bit more compact. And um, it's just more convenient to have the reduction plate being a part of the motor. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the point is, this is a, not a shortcut. This is not a shortcut in money. This is not a shortcut in time. Um, it's expensive. It's time consuming. Uh, somebody just actually talked about this on in the Paramotor Homemade group, uh, and they said, "Be prepared to learn and learn a lot," which is absolutely true. Like uh, I had to learn the basic principles of uh, how a propeller works. How, uh, which by the way is going to be another video I want to bring forward and talk about things. Um, you know, uh, how does a uh, propeller use engines horsepower and what role does the reduction play in it and the reduction ratio and the propeller pitch you have to really understand those things or else you're just throwing random numbers and then hoping it works um, and that's not how this project works you actually have to learn to understand what a stiffer spring in the valve train does you know uh, in 
keeping the valve from uh, levitating off the cam every time it makes a rotation at a higher RPM. Um, it's called valve float. Um, so you can actually keep the valves from hitting the piston, for example, right? Um, so all those things I had to learn, and that's why I'm releasing a lot of those videos, so some of those things are uh, covered, and you can actually learn to understand it a little bit easier, as well as the steps I took to build this. Um, but it doesn't substitute for having to learn a lot of that stuff anyways. So, anyway, uh, don't take this the wrong way. Uh, I really want to see more of these built. I want to see other people come up with things that I didn't come up with, so we can all learn from it and, you know, make a cool engine, make a cool platform, and make it possible for other people to get into this the DIY way, DIY way, and um, yeah man, go build something. I love I love watching other people's projects come together and people getting up the ground. There's this guy, uh, I forget his name, he's building this uh, over overbuilt um, frame that is all aluminum and thick and has, you know, wide ring and protection bars there's no way in hell you would have any sort of prop strike with that thing and it's beautiful man it's a work of art um there's not a manufacturer that makes a frame that beautiful so you know if you're into this join the paramotor homemade group come hang out with us and um build something cool um and i'm out thanks for watching uh subscribe for i'm gonna release like i said um a couple other videos right now i'm uploading and um uh, i want to make a video that goes into the whole Understanding of propellers, reductions, engine horsepower, <laughs> torque, <laughs> and uh, common misconceptions because, yeah, I'll go into that when we get there. Thanks for watching.